Alright, what is up you guys? And of course always, welcome back to another episode of Who Wants Really Better? And this week we're going to cover a niche I think is very very interesting and it seems to have done about the same with these two Pokemon, which is why I really want to focus on it. The Scrappy Fighting Type. Some argue that that's not a, no, a defined niche, but it really is, as Fighting Types usually are walled by Ghost Type and of course, to an extent, the knockoff coverage that kinda saved them in Generation 6 is a non-issue for these types of Pokemon, as that means that Fire Stab does neutral damage. Surfetch introduced this generation has a lot of tricks up its sleeve to make it relevant, and Pangaroo, which of course was introduced in Generations before it in Generation 6, really has been standing out since that day. It works as a potential trick remover. Sweeper in an extent, but also the, the niche here is very infallible that it's a Pokemon that deals with ghost types head-on and Since they both fill that niche, it's up to me to of course go over their overarching theme in both small and OU But also in leagues where I think they will be more defined as they do fill Roughly the same role in the small and OU So with that said, I really want to of course as always thank you for joining this episode and join me here for a really interesting episode of Who of these? that are really better. We're gonna start off with Pangoro since it was introduced first, so let's go. So what makes Pangoro so unique? Well, this is a Pokemon that always has been compared to Scrafty, and for the very right reasons. I actually did an episode on that, so feel free to watch that episode if you want to see how I think about them both. I do say this, I stand by that result today. But um, the Fighting Dark combination is a very good combination, but Pangoro works a lot differently than Scrafty. It's not the bulky setup Pokemon. This is a very hard hitting one hit wonder Pokemon. Uh, we have immunity in Psychic, which is great, strong resist, dark and uh, regular resistance to uh, Ghost and Rock, and have weaknesses as common of uh, Fire type, which is Flying and Fairy, but due to being a Dark type, you're also weak to, and unfortunately I should say, finding to your own stab move. But besides that, it's pretty much as a fighting type should be. It resists the things that matter and it pushes back the things it needs to. And the resistances, I mean the weaknesses are very very easy to tell when they're gonna hit up. So the combination, while having issues, are still quite fair and it's not like go to take a fair move anyway, whether or not you're in a dark type or a fighting type, so being both might not be that devastating. Now the stat distribution, it's an interesting one, it's fairly bulky at 95 HP and uh, the attack is really high at 124, among the highest on the finance types. And then with defenses, which is 78, and of course special defense is 71, and a speed stat that isn't necessarily all that impressive at 58. So yeah, it is among the slower, more bulkier variants of the finance types, but um, it's still in essence quite frail, even though it has a lot of HP to dispute. And of course a special attack at 69. Worth mentioned, not necessarily worth using. It has a few special moves that could be utilized, but overall, there is really nothing deviating for that high attack stat. When it comes to abilities, we have three good ones. All of these three are relevant in their own right. We have Iron Fist, which boosts 20% of your damage output to fist moves. Mold Breaker that ignores defensive um, abilities, such as Levitate, for example. And we have Scrappy. Which is something that I really like about this Pokemon. While Scrappy do allow you to hit Ghost Up, you also have the stab combination of Dark, so it will always have a Dark move to capitalize on. But being able to spam close combat without fearing makes the Bandit set all that more better. But as a whole, I like myself Iron Fist variant and Mold Breaker too. And quite frankly, it all boils down to what you really want or need for the matchups. So with that said, how good is this Pokemon's move pool? And there is where I think at least this Pokemon is at, because depending on what, you, what route you want to go with, it could be very, very key for what it can do, as it can not only have a niche, but a real expertise in contrast to its abilities and its stance distribution. Oh, what is this? A complete move pool! Hey! Yes, expect something like this in the future. I've gotten complaints about that I can't show what moves Pokemon get. And yeah, I respect that comment, and I'll try to do everything I can to make that better. That said, Pegor's move pool, it is extremely large, and I really just want to focus on the things that matters. So with that said, first and foremost, setup moves. Bulk up, soul stats. Bulk up, rarely use that, but it's an option. Uh, it's a circle throw. But 
besides that, Swordsense where is that? Swordsense has two ways where it can be relevant. First and foremost, Swordsense just as a setup move works if you predict right to make a more speedier variant of um, Pangoro. But the other one, which is more reliant, are the Trick Room variant of Pangoro. Yes, you burn a turn for setup, but Pangoro is slow enough to work really well in an environment where Trick Room could be workable. So basically, Soul Snaps and then, you no know, wave at things, basically, as a push button is the thing to go. 124 attack is, after all, quite considered to be a quite large <laughs> attack stat. And then we come to the main stabs. It got an upgrade this generation, and it's a very relevant one at that, because it means that this Pokemon is no longer having a timer when it comes to how offensively capable it can be. Previous generation, it had um, Storm Throw and um, Super Power and Drain Punch. Fair moves, Drain Punch was usually one you go with with Iron Fist, but Super Power is usually most often the best one, but you lower of course your attack by one. That is no longer an option, it got close combat and it's huge in this environment as it basically means that you don't lose your attack. So you can use Sword Stats and you just can spam that close combat, it's incredible and invaluable for this Pokemon. And of course it works with another item called Eject Button, which is really good. Eject button basically means that once you lower any stat of yourself, you get switched out. Uh, so it's basically a free switch after you attack. And uh, Pengor can use this, though Bandit, always the best set, I all insist. But it still has a very good niche for it. And besides that, on the dark side, um, let's just be honest here, it got knockoff. Knockoff is just incredible in every way and should be the only dark move you ever consider. But it also gets Crunch and Darkest Lariat, which is all fair moves. But yeah, knockoff is where it's at. And then it comes with filler moves with a variety of really good ones. And of course, these could be more relevant in, oh, go just say it as it is, in a league environment. As um, you, you are really good off with finding a dark as a whole. There really are close, a co complete combination. And the fillers could be most likely Ice Punch to fill out any kind of matchup that would force this out. That's it. For filler moves, it gets a few moves that are relevant. I'm going to, of course, mention them in Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch. And uh, he gets two moves that are good for fairies. One of them are Gunk Shot, which is a big one, as it does necessarily define why, why Pangoro was preferred over Scrafty in tiers above NU. The reason is the damage output on the fairy types. It got Iron Head too, which I think is a more reliable option, but at the same time, Gunk Shot is basically the definition of whether or not you kill something or really kill something. And the combination complete basically with that. Finding Dog are always resisted by fairy, having something to really pop them, uh, like Gunk Shot, is invaluable. And the Pagora gets that, makes this Pokemon just so incredible. Um, it should be mentioned here that it also gets Pivot Option in Potting Shot, which is really great for it, as if you have a situation where you have a matchup, they're always going to win against you and you see it coming. Yeah, why not Potting Shot? This is a Pokemon that introduced it, it was a signature move, and while it is too slow to use it effectively, it is an option to use it, and quite frankly, it's not that bad. Um, other weird field moves you may have mentioned is Exisor, Stone Edge, Rock Slide, and Zen Headbutt. They are usually not that common, however, always worth considering. And another thing that is really great with uh, Pangor is the option of getting Grass Knot. Don't, the reason I mentioned this is the matchup is no longer there, but having something like Grass Knot to hit, Seismitoad, Swampert, and um, Ride on Hyperior for really high damage could be preferable over that attack stat. Special attack at you know, roughly 70 base, it is low. But it is a lot more reliable versus if you have a matchup where, in this meta Lisa, where Seismitoad most likely could defensively shake you. So overall, Pangoro is one of those Pokemon that it's always been good, but always have a reason not to be used. But it is one of the best sweepers in the Trick Room setting. In a League aspect, yes, it has issues, but it also deals with those issues rather naturally. You just need to allow this Pokemon to function. And look at that move pool. There are things here that works very well. It has priority, it has parting shot in, you know, some type of pivot, and it has just about a complete move pool to deal with anything it can be forced to fend off against. So for my money, 
while this Pokemon is in RUBL in Smogon, it is still an incredible asset for any meta, more so now they got access to knockoff in the league aspect. It is among the better dark types and probably among the better fire types. As stated, it has issue against its own stab combinations, but besides that, this is a Pokemon that just wreaks havoc. If you this Pokemon gets a free turn, you go into struggle. But yeah, this of course only Pangora side. How good are Surfetch? Well, he's quite good, I tell you that. So what stands out about Surfetch, which is both a blessing and a curse, is that it's a soul fighting type. It did not get to keep its flying type. I think it's unfortunate because it functions differently from the likes of Hawalucha. But at the same time, would it have mattered in the grand scheme of things? Possibly not. And since it is a slower Pokemon, it might actually just have damaged it because of the extra weaknesses inborn with flying type. That said, Soul Fighting type is a good defensive and offensive typing, resist Bug, Dark, and Rock, weak to Fairy, Flying, and Psychic. So, overall, nothing to it. And then it comes to the stats of the Surfetch. And there's where I think it gets rather interesting, as it has a low HP of 62, a really high attack set, like very, very high, 135. That's a lot of attack. And then the defenses are quite fair, 95 and 82. It's in theory bulkier than Pangoro, even Pangoro has 30 more base HP because those defensive stats are soaking hits better. And then roughly the same special attack at 68, and it is speedier than Pangoro at 65 base speed, which doesn't sound all that much, but it is the difference between dealing with a tankier defensive matchup or not. Pangoro usually need to invest itself in um, speed to be able to deal with the likes of Jellison, for example. Surfetch doesn't necessarily have that, or rather, um, since um, it basically is speed time with Jellicent, it has options to really force it out, and it has enough speed investment to deal with Milotic's defensive set if it wants to invest on that, so the speed steer is it's good, it is relevant for sure. And then we have the abilities in Scrappy and Steadfast, and Steadfast boosts your speed by 1 if you're flinched, you will never use that. I don't believe anyone will use that even in the likes of a league aspect, but Scrappy always relevant and for right reasons. It means that you can of course spam that close combat, and there is where this Pokemon is at. It is one of those Pokemon that stands out because it really just did what Pangoro could do. This Pokemon defined that asset as a higher attack, higher speed, and a more defensive backbone, and the typing doesn't hold it defensively against it at times. So Surfetch is quite fair and very reliable, and one of the most interesting Pokemon introduced in this generation because that niche is now expertized and defined. Um, it made people open their eyes up for Pangoro, but in hindsight, yeah, you know, this scrappy variant of Surfetch will always be in theory better than Pangoro. So just gonna have that said, it's that is something that I think Surfetch actually woke up again. It. It's a weird niche that actually fills a main role, and Surfers just perfected that aspect. But, as you guys know, I know Pokemon is also as good as the move pool allows it to be. So, let's see Surfers move pool. So when it comes to Surfers move pool, it is not as wide as Mangoro, as... Well, it doesn't have two generations behind it to make that move pool that much stronger, or better, or wider. But is the move pool good? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it, it's real good. First and foremost, three ways of setup. We have Curse, On Head, and Soul Stance. One of them being relevant, possibly, but quite frankly, I, I would love to use Curse on this Pokemon, as while this speedy, it actually does really alright with Curse. Those extra defense really does help it. And besides that, when it comes to um, priority, it has Quick Attack, but probably the thing that you know, people know about this Pokemon are the first impression. It is an invaluable asset for Surfetch because it basically means that there are no speedy psychic type that beats it at least first turn. And yeah, that's incredible. Um, there are so few Pokemon like this, and having that asset is basically a stronger sucker punch. And um, it's why this Pokemon is so good with Choice Band because it just pops people. Uh, and when it comes to stab moves, it really is just close combat that is worth mentioning. Uh, unfortunately, this Pokemon didn't get Body Press, which I thought was really unfortunate, because due to its having higher defense and, clearly, uh, Curse, I think that would have been incredible. But also Meteor Assault, which is an extra strong 
fire type move, but you need to recharge the turn after. Basically, you impact, but finding. Don't use that. Close combat is where it's at, always. And when it comes to filler moves, it's kind of up there. It got knockoff, which is a, one of the best fillers for every fighting type, because it does mean that you hit your psychic type for really high damage. But we also have Brave Bird. How about that? And um, we have Leaf Blade for those pesky rock types. But yeah, when well, no grass type, but trust me, close combat is plenty. And for, no, of course, the obvious one, the fairy types, you have Poison Jab and Steel Wing. So overall, not that bad. Not that bad at all. Uh, it even gets Throat Shop, I believe. And it has one really strangeness, and that is a one of the few fighting types that has Defog. So it can work as a Defogger. It's clearly defensive enough to pull that off. And um, as of right now, and this is probably the only thing I think is unfortunate with um, Surfet, it doesn't have Roost. And it's something that I would say would make it a lot more viable, because it would mean that it can use a defensive set with Defog and you spam possibly a scrappy close combat. Uh, it doesn't have necessarily that option right now, but it's something I think is going to change in the future. But overall, this combination for it is plenty, as it does get, like I said here, the combination is enough for B defined as a good fine type. It does have its high damage output in stab and close combat. We have knockoff for any defensive psychic type that could wall it or ghost, even though we have scrappy. And then we have something for the fairies who walls this combination, poison jab and steel wing. So overall, I think this is a really good Pokemon. Um, The only thing that I think it suffers for is that it doesn't have a pilot option. I really would have liked this Pokemon to get U-turn. But as it stands, first impression, having that asset is, is something that I would call invaluable for uh, Surfetch. And it is a reason this Pokemon is in small and UU. It pressures so many matchups naturally in a league aspect. While it is a one trick pony, it at least is threatening enough to be considered a threat. I use it myself in league and have had good matchups with it. So I know this Pokemon is incredible vast and very tough to deal with. So for me, for only being what is that Pokemon right now, I believe is five months old, it is an incredible asset for this meta and one of the best fighters I've introduced this generation. So if you think about it, like no matter how I twist and turn things, it is to be defined like this. Surfetch is the better scrappy Pokemon, hands down. Pangor can do that role. But as stated before, Surfetch perfected it. So in a Smogun meta, if they're used the same way in theory, one has to say Surfetch is of course better. Um, it should go without notice. And the same thing in a Trick Room Asset, I guess Pangoro has a small niche, it is slightly slower and has a better stab combination um, offensively. So in a Trick Room, yeah, sure, Pangoro could be defined as better. But overall, Surfetch is better in a Smogun OU or Smogun meta. Leaks, however, as said before, the one trick pony aspect of Surfetch is something that is holding this Pokemon back. And in the end of the day, if I'm going to define them, if they're both are roughly the same in Smogun OU, I would say that I rather give this win to the Pokemon that is more diverse. And it should go without notice. Pangoro is a better diverse offensive Pokemon. It works in this environment naturally. It has a broader move pool for more matchups and a speed here that can be defined and a pivot option and setup. And it just overall comes in a complete package a lot better together than Surfetch, which right now are limited by the move pool it has. I think the day it gets Roost, if it gets it in upcoming generation, it is very clear that is a Pokemon that could be defined as potentially better because of the asset of getting defog. But right now, Pangoro just solves a lot more than Surfetch can do, and is naturally, in my honest opinion, the better Pokemon between these two. So, with that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It, uh, I'll be honest, I like both of these Pokemon, and I think it's very tough to say which one is better because it, they are so much alike, which is why I really want to focus on this video as something of interest, as they are unique in carving a niche that is not that crowded. Surfish is the second one to join that niche, and uh, who knew that niche could be better and defined? But yeah, I prefer Pangoro because of all other reasons. Having the flexibility of doing more than just a scrappy beast it's something I'll call invaluable and something I think many more people should wake up upon because Pangoro is 
great. It's awesome. It's very tough. And the gunshot aspect of just popping fairies, it's something that sadly Surface that right now can't do. Um, so with that said, I want to thank you for always for watching and join us next episode for this matchup.